Okay. Um, this is a response video. Excuse me. Why is it I have to burp or yawn as soon as I turn my camera on? Or get a drink. I'm so entertaining. I don't even have to do anything. I just have to sit here. Okay. Um, this is a response video to Joni. Joan 3424. And uh, I'm going to be looking down at my screen a lot, so just forgive me. Um, I have a hard time focusing on the camera with this new webcam. I don't know what it is, but if I don't turn my monitor off, I want to look at myself. I guess I'm a little conceited or something. I don't know. It's the vanity. I'm so vain. Um, so to the questions. Number one. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Let me say this much. I had a lot of goals as a child that I have never reached. Um, the first thing I remember ever wanting to be was a nurse. But that was before I ever really knew what a nurse was. And that was whenever I still had the stereotypical crap in my head that nurses wore the white hats. I mean, like, from the old days, you know the white hats and the little white uniforms with the white skirts and the white hose and the white shoes and doctors wore those big things on their heads with the big mirror thing yeah because you know why because whenever I was probably in the second grade we went on a field trip to the hospital hmm what a field trip that is I don't even know why they took us there I don't even remember much about the field trip I don't even think, I mean, it's not like we got to tour it early, but we might have. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. The second grade, I was probably six. No, seven. Seven. So that was like 16 years ago, if I can count right. 16, almost 16 years ago, yeah. So anyways, I wanted to be a nurse because they gave us the little nurse's hats. They gave all the girls nurses hats and all the boys the doctor's hats. This was like in the 90s, in the early 90s. How crappy is that? I don't know why I wanted to be a nurse, but I did. I thought the hat was cool. But now looking back, I think it was kind of crappy that they made all the girls wear the nurses hats. Like, we couldn't be doctors. Um, then after that, I wanted to be a teacher because I had a really great teacher when I was in the fourth grade, and I adored her, and I wanted to be just like her. And then as I got into high school, I wanted to be a, I still wanted to be a nurse, but for different reasons, <laughs> obviously. I didn't want the white hat anymore. And um, I was going to be a LPN, and then I was going to go for my RN. But my, my goal was to start out as a nursing assistant. That way, if I didn't like the environment, I would know before I started paying for college for something that I was going to hate, and I didn't. Uh, I did I did love my job as a nursing assistant, but it's not something that I would want to do permanently, like for the rest of my life. And the nurses had to do some pretty bad stuff that I knew I would not be able to do. So um, that kind of got mixed. And then I went back to school to be a preschool teacher. and. I um, started looking for a job, and then I found out I was pregnant with Noah. So I uh, became a mommy instead. I don't know what I'd do if I, if I wanted to go back to school. I have a million ideas in my head, but I don't know that any of them will ever come true. I'll just have to find out when it happens. Number two, besides the computer, what do you regard as the most important invention or discovery in your lifetime and why? I had a really good answer for this earlier today and I completely forgot it. Isn't that sad? And I can't even remember what it was now. It really pisses me off that I can't remember. Cordless phones. Not the greatest invention, but it is pretty good. I don't really care for cell phones to be honest with you. I don't have a cell phone. Justin has a cell phone, but he doesn't like it. He just has to have it for work. Um, cell phones are great. I mean, cordless phones are great. Um, TVs are great. Um, 
washing machines and dryers are wonderful. And I thought it just did something that would mop my floor for me, that I wouldn't have to push around. That would be awesome. Okay, number three. What is your earliest memory of a grandparent? I have two. Um, I have a lot of grandparents, so first of all. I have, let's see, my mother's mother, my mother's real father that um, kind of abandoned her and her mom when she was a baby. Then my mother's stepfather that adopted her when she was a little girl that raised her, her daddy. So that's three grandparents right there. And my mom's mother has been married quite a few times, and she's married now, so he's a step-grandfather. That's four. My mom's dad, I mean, my, my dad's dad, my dad's real mother, my dad's stepmother, that's seven. And I have my great-grandfather and his wife, my great-grandmother and her husband, my great-great-grandmother. How many is that? Twelve? Not including steps and all that. Oh, it's so many. So I won't go into every grandparent. I'll just tell you about my two favorite memories. Well, I have three. Well, one's not really the first memory. It's just something that I remember. My great-grandmother, um, I've done videos on her before, by the way, um, from Christmas at the nursing home. She, um, she's my mother's grandmother. And she used to call me her little princess. The only person I ever remember calling me princess. My mom never called me princess. But she always called me her little princess because I was her oldest great-grandchild. And every time we went to her house, before she was in the nursing home, she called me her princess. And every time we'd walk in the door, she'd call me princess. And before we left, she'd have to call me princess 15 million times. And she never even hardly called me by my name when I was growing up. She always called me princess. Like, that was my nickname or something for her. And then, let's see, my great-grandfather, which is my mom's grandfather, which is my princess grandma's first husband. He was pretty much the only um, male role model positive male role model I had in my life growing up and he pretty much helped my mom raise us, him and his wife, my nana and uh, nana. It's, na it's spelled nana but it's pronounced nana. But anyways, um, he, when I was four years old, he took us out riding around in the country and um, we had just moved back here from St. Louis. And I remember seeing cows in the pastures. And I'd never seen cows in the pastures before. Because I don't guess we had cows in the pastures. I don't know. But um, I was four and I wanted a cow. And I begged him for weeks to buy me a cow and put it in my backyard. And then my um, last memory is my dad's stepmother, which was my granny. And, his, and um, my papa, which is my dad's father. And I don't have a whole lot of memories of them, so I think the ones that I do have I cherish because I really did love them, and it was, it's just a long story. But um, they had one of those big, huge fans that has, like, the captain's chairs in the front, and then it's got, like, two chair, two big long seats in the back, and the very back seat folds out into, a, like, a futon bed or whatever. I don't know what the heck it is. It's not a camper. It's just one of those big fans. But I remember whenever I was two years old that they had bought one of those little kitty recliners and put it in the van in between the two captain's chairs in the front seat and that was in my chair. Um, I was the baby at the time so I got spoiled. At least that's what I'm told. Um, but I do remember that and I'm sure it probably wasn't the safest thing in the world but it was 20 years ago. Uh, I guess it didn't matter then. I don't know. But those are my memories and those are my answers so that's it. Bye.